Good people of Atlanta, we must never forget that Anthony Bourdain killed himself. <laughs> Anthony Bourdain had the greatest job that show business ever produced. This nigga flew around the world <laughs> and ate delicious meals with outstanding people. That man, with that job, hung himself in a luxury suite in France. They say 2000 zero, zero, party over, oops, out of time. So tonight I'm gonna party like it's 1999. I knew a nigga in high school that was an urban genius. This motherfucker's grades were so good, he got all the way from the hood to an Ivy League school with a full scholarship. From there, the motherfucker got himself into one of the best law schools in the country. And when he was in law school, he met a woman, and they fell in love, and they were gonna get married. I remember him telling me about it. He was home for Christmas, and I told him, I said, my man, my man, save that bitch for late in your life. <laughs> but he's in love. He didn't listen to me. He married her while he was in law school. And sadly, they got divorced while he was in law school. <laughs> he was a street nigga from the hood. This man had nothing. And that bitch took half of that. <laughs> and then I just never saw him again for years. And then two years ago, I was home in DC doing some shopping, trying to buy my sons some socks at Foot Locker. I go to Foot Locker, guess who's the manager? That nigga. <laughs> Dressed like a referee, the whole shit. <laughs> this motherfucker is 45 years old. <laughs> we went out drinking that night just trying to catch up and, and he told me, he said he's been living with his mother for like 10 years just trying to get back on his feet. But that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is, never occurred to this nigga to kill himself. <laughs> he's alive and well in DC. Even suggested to him that he should try it out. Like, I don't know, nigga, he might do it. I'm goddamn sick of it. This is the worst time ever to be a celebrity. You're gonna be finished. Everyone's doomed. <laughs> Michael Jackson has been dead for 10 years, and this nigga has two new cases. And if you haven't watched that documentary, uh, then I'm begging you, don't watch it. <laughs> it's fucking gross. I felt like HBO was sticking baby dicks in my ears for four hours straight. <laughs> really nasty shit. I don't wanna know all these things. <laughs> Turns out, uh, Michael Jackson allegedly likes a long gander at the anus. So they said he stares at people's buttholes. That's what they said. That's how gross the documentary was. I'm gonna say something that I'm not allowed to say. But I gotta be real. I don't believe these motherfuckers. I do not believe them. Let me qualify the statement. I, I am what's known on the streets as a victim blamer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Somebody come up to me like, Dave, Dave, Chris Brown just beat up Rihanna. I'll be like, well, what did she do? <laughs> <laughs> Dave, Michael Jackson was molesting the children. Well, what were those kids wearing at the time? I don't think he did it. But you know what? Even if he did do it, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it's Michael Jackson. I 
know more than half the people in this room have been molested in their lives. But it wasn't no goddamn Michael Jackson, was it? This kid got his dick sucked by the king of pop. All we get is awkward Thanksgivings for the rest of our lives. You know how good it must have felt to go to school the next day after that shit? Hey, Billy, how was the weekend? How was my weekend? Michael Jackson sucks my dick. And that was my first sexual experience. If I'm starting here, then well, sky's the limit. I know it seems harsh, but man, somebody's got to teach these kids. There's no such thing as a free trip to Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna want to look at your butthole or something. <laughs> you know why I don't believe it? You know why I don't believe it? Because if Michael Jackson's out here doing all this molesting, then, then why not Macaulay Culkin, hmm? Macaulay Culkin said in an interview that Michael Jackson never did anything inappropriate with him or even around him. Think about that shit. You know, I'm not a pedophile. But if I was, Macaulay Culkin's the first kid I'm fucking, I'll tell you that right now. I'd be a goddamn hero. Hey, that guy over there fucked a kid from Home Alone. And you know how hard he is to catch. <laughs> My mind's telling me no. Well, uh, okay, R. Kelly is different. I mean, you know, if I'm a betting man, I'm gonna put my money on, he probably did that shit. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he did that shit. You know, it was bad, okay, so a couple years ago, I was doing a show in Detroit, and I'm sitting backstage in my dressing room, a friend of mine comes by, this chick, Dream Hampton. Dream uh, tells me, right before I'm going on stage, she goes, Dave, I'm working on a documentary on, about R. Kelly. Would you like to be in it? And I was like, nah, bitch, I'm cool. I went on stage, I just forgot about the shit. And then two years later, the documentary comes out, Surviving R. Kelly. And when it comes out, Dream's promoting the shit, and she keeps bringing me up. She said, I asked Dave Chappelle to be in my documentary, and he said it was too hot for TV. Bitch, I did not say that. <laughs> it does not even sound like how I talk. Oh, that's too hot for TV? I would never say that shit. But I'm gonna tell you guys why I wasn't in the documentary. There's a very simple reason, and uh, I cannot stress this point enough. The only reason that I didn't do it was because, and it's very important, I don't know this nigga at all. I don't know anything. I don't know anything that they don't tell me about. I don't hang out with this nigga, nothing. So what the fuck do I gotta be in the documentary for? <laughs> this guy, R. Kelly, got another sex tape out now. Can you believe that shit? This guy makes more sex tapes than he does music. <laughs> He's like the DJ Khaled of sex tapes. Another one. Like, damn, nigga. Got... It's a lot of tapes. <laughs> the new one's so bad that they didn't even show it. I've never seen anything like this. The prosecutor in Chicago came out in a press conference and read to the media a transcript of a sex tape. Have you ever heard of such a thing? This nigga read the sex tape. And it was so bad that R. Kelly sounded guilty in the transcripts. It's fucking amazing. 16 times the girl's age was mentioned. Isn't that crazy? This motherfucker's an idiot. He was fucking like, yeah, this is the best 14-year-old pussy I've ever had in my life. 
And she was like, you like this 14 pussy? She's like, oh yeah, I love this 14. I'm like, man, you need to shut the fuck up. You gotta give your lawyer something to work with. You're supposed to be on the tape like, this is the best 36-year-old pussy I've ever had in my life. And then your lawyer gonna be like, your honor, clearly my client thought that this woman was 36, as he mentioned some 16 times in the tape. <laughs> They're gonna know you lying, though. You know what I mean? Everybody knows no such thing as good 36-year-old pussy. It's hard not to write these jokes. It's hard not to think about. Even when I watch sports, I be thinking about. Like, like, think about. Okay, okay. Say, say LeBron James uh, changed his gender. You know what I mean? Okay. Can he stay in the NBA, or because he's a woman, does he have to go to the WNBA, where he will score 840 points a game? <laughs> what? Does it actually mean to be equal? You know what I mean? Like, if women are actually equal to men, then there would be no WNBA, would there? You would just be good enough to play in the NBA with us. Or, here's another idea that's gonna be very controversial, you could shut the fuck up. I'm sorry, ladies, I just, I got a fucking Me Too headache. Y'all is killing me right now. It's really fucking tough to watch what's going on. You know, ladies, I said it in my last special, and I got in a lot of trouble for this. I told you you were right. But the way you're going about it is not going to work. But I'm biased. I said it. Louis C.K. was a very good friend of mine before he died in that terrible masturbation accident. And it was his room. You read the story. He was masturbating in his own room. That's where he's supposed to masturbate. And then he said, hey, everybody, I'm going to pull my dick out. Nobody ran for the door or nothing like that. They all just kind of hung out like, I wonder if this guy's serious. <laughs> and he came on his own stomach. There it is. What is the threat? Have any women ever seen a guy that just came on his own stomach? This is the least threatening motherfucker the earth has ever seen. All you see is shame in their face and cum dripping down like pancake butter. <laughs> he didn't do anything that you can call the police for. I dare to try. Call the police on him. Hello, police. Yes, I am. I am on the other line with comedian Louis C.K. And I think that he is masturbating while I'm on the phone. You know what the police are gonna say in Atlanta? Well, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they ruined this nigga's life, and now he's coming back playing comedy clubs, and they acting like if he's able to do that, that's gonna hurt women. What the fuck is your agenda, ladies? Is, is sexism dead? No, in fact, the opposite happened. I said it was gonna get worse, and they said I was tone deaf. But eight states, including your state, have passed the most stringent anti-abortion laws this nation has seen since Roe v. Wade. 